Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another video. Today we're talking Incubus Wish You Were Here and I'll go through each part of the song and show you how to play it. Now with the verse parts I will show you how to play it with and without the delay on so you can get a handle on what's being played versus how it sounds when kind of all the bells and whistles are on top and you get all the nice delays going on as well. A quick note about the gear that I'm using for this one, I'm using my PRS SE Hollow Body 2 Piezo. I have a whole video specifically about this guitar so if you're interested in that I will link it up here somewhere and it will be in the description down below as well. I am going through my Mesa Tremor Verb which again I have a video for that as well if you're interested about the amp that I have and that Mike uses I will link that as well and finally for the delay parts I'm using the Boss RV3 which for this song in particular I have a video talking about how to get all the delay sounds and what my pedal is set to and an extra delay part as well so if you're interested in that I will also link that in the description and in the comments and anywhere else that I can for you guys to check out if you're interested. I'll put all the settings for the Mesa on the screen now so you can see what everything is set to in case you want to kind of mimic the same thing and just be aware that this guitar does have a piezo in it as well which is kind of blended in slightly to the guitar sound so it gives a kind of unique quality to the sound. With all that being said let's get on to the tutorial. So let's dive straight into the intro of this song and we're starting on an A sus2 chord so that's at the second fret and we're playing the open A string. My first finger is up on the D string on the second fret and I'm using my little finger on the G string of the fourth fret and we're playing the A, the D and the G string. And then we've only got a couple of strums there before we go to an, an E power chord essentially, which is open E, second finger is then barring on the second fret on the A and the D string there, and the little finger is staying where it is on the fourth fret, so. Then we are coming up to what looks like sort of a power chord shape, but it's, this is actually a B power chord, and you've got the fifth in the bass there. So we are barring across the second fret with our first finger on the low E string and the A string on the second fret. And then I'm using my little finger again here. You could use your ring finger, and that is on the fourth fret of the D string. We're playing the, the E, the A, and the D string there. So those together. Then we're sliding that same shape up to the fifth fret, which is actually a D power chord. So we're using exactly the same shape there before coming down to a standard kind of E power chord. So open E barring across on the second fret on the A and the D string. Then that kind of cycles back round but when we get what we were playing, the B here on the second fret, we are actually playing then an F sharp power chord. Your standard power chord, so first finger on the low E on the second fret, third finger on the fourth fret on the A string, and your little finger is on the fourth fret on the D string. And then we're sliding that up to an A power chord before again finishing on that E power chord. So let's put that all together slowly. And as you can see there, my hand never really lets up. So you, your strumming hand is constantly going, and Mike does this a lot in his guitar chord progressions. He will constantly keep that hand going, and then your left hand is just moving around. So you'll see you're almost playing a few open notes as you, as you move through the progression. So... And then we have that little octave slide up before it goes into kind of the, the heavier chorus section, which are the same chords again, just with distortion on. So that part. So instead of hanging on that E power chord there, we're just playing it a couple of times before your standard octave shape on the A and the G string there, and we're muting the D string underneath. So this is up on a, an, an E octave, essentially, at the 7th fret. First finger on the A string at the 7, 
I'm, again, I'm using my little finger. You could use your ring finger on the ninth fret of the G string. And we're just sliding that up two frets up to the ninth fret there to play an F sharp. Again, just an octave shape. So, And then we kick on distortion. You can play that octave stab again there. I mean, on the recording, he doesn't do that, but live he, I think he still does it. And it certainly used to do it loads as well. So you could play that as well. Then from there, we get on to probably the hardest part of the song, which is the verse parts. Now I'll play this through first without any effects on, and then later on I'll put the delays on and you can hear what it sounds like kind of up to tempo and as if you were kind of playing along to the track and or recording it. So I like to think of what well, it is going around a, a C sharp minor pentatonic. So if you know this shape, Let's call that position one. So that's up at the, the ninth fret there, starting on your C sharp note. And then we're also using some of position five as well, which would be, so the position just below position one. And we are starting with our second finger on the G string of the ninth fret. And then first finger is coming back to the seventh fret on the B string. And we're using the open high E string here as well. And we are playing, So that is just going from the G. So you're going up G, B, E, and then back to the B and back to the G before then your little finger is coming down on the 11th fret on the D string to complete kind of that chord. And by doing that and having all these fingers down, you let all of the, these notes ring together and you're basically repeating notes, which gives it that really nice, especially when the, the delays are on, they all kind of meet to make this really big, nice chord. So you can hear how they kind of all marry up together there. It's a really lovely sound. Then from there, You're playing the open B string a couple of times, then hammering from the ninth fret to the 11th fret on the D string. I'm actually picking both of those notes as well. You could just hammer. So hammer, and then come down to the G on the ninth fret before quickly grabbing the high E at the 12th fret. Then you go from the high E of the 12th and you're picking back onto the 9th at the B string before hammering on to the 10th on the B string and then playing the G and B together. So 9th and 10th there to get that little chord that finishes it off. So all together. Now in the, the second verse of this, he seems to play this chord, which is just an A major chord with that high E played as well. So you can play just the G and the B, or you can play all three. He seems to kind of mix, mix and match it as the song goes on. And the second part starts the same. the two open B notes first. So that's still a hammer on, but then we're barring on the ninth fret of the, the G and the B strings. And we go G, B, back to G before landing on the D string at the 11th fret and then playing straight underneath that with our little finger on the G string at the 11th fret there as well. So. And then two picks on the ninth fret of the G string. And then open B and open E to then cycle you back round to the start again. So all together.
And then later on, before it kind of goes back into the chorus, you've got these little extra embellishments. So when you land on... You can hear it does this kind of live a lot as well. He runs back through that chord before going into... And then the same again there, he'll play back through... And then you just play the open B and E, but then you kick on the distortion when you play that, take the delay off, and then you are back into your chorus section. Now, before we go any further, let me just kick on the delays and things so you can hear exactly how, or as close as I could get to the recorded version of this. Now, I do have a video all about delay settings and how what I've done to recreate this sound. If you haven't seen that, I will link that up here in a card, and I will also put it in the description down below as well, so check that out if you haven't seen it. So this is the verse, how it would sound with the delays on. So carrying on through the song, the next part is kind of the interlude bridge part, which is really straightforward. It's uh, just octave shapes. So we're starting here on the fourth fret with the octave shape. So first finger on the A string at the fourth fret. I'm using my little finger again here on the sixth fret of the G. And we're going from the fourth fret up to the seventh fret and back to the fifth fret for the first two times round. So... And then we go around the third time, we slide up to the seventh and back to the fifth, but then we're sliding up to the tenth fret. And we do that a couple of times, but the strumming varies. So it's... So let's put that bridge part all together, all, all the way through. You can see there as well there's a few sort of percussive notes in there again this strumming hand just never stops really it's muting with your left hand that is creating that pattern so so you can hear there those percussive notes in between then after you've hung on this we're sliding down to the intro again, which is back to our ASUS 2. So again, we have that with the octave slide up again before finishing on your chorus riff until the end and then ending on your ASUS 2 again. So if this video has helped you, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button as it would push me out to other guitar players or anyone else that's interested in this kind of content. If you wish to support my channel in any way, you can support me over on Patreon where you will get all the tabs for every Incubus song I have covered, plus exclusive tutorials just like this one over there as well. You can also really help my channel by hitting that say thanks button that you can pledge any amount of money to me through YouTube, which would be hugely appreciated. I also have a affiliate links that are in the description and if you buy anything through those links I will get a very small commission but you can buy t-shirts such as this one the link is in the description down below as well any way you choose to support my channel will be hugely appreciated and just helps me keep making more videos thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one